Jameis Winston is one of the most polarizing figures in the NFL. In 2019, he became the eighth quarterback ever to throw for 5,000 yards. But despite that incredible level of production, he also became the seventh quarterback to throw at least 30 interceptions. The bad outweighed the good, and the Bucks signed Brady. So moving forward, the question blares loudly. Is Jameis one of the 32 best quarterbacks in the NFL? Prior to this season, Jameis was a middling quarterback with similar turnover questions. He had a 21-33 record as a starter and an 88-55 touchdown-to-interception ratio. He's always been a quarterback with plus arm talent and an affinity for pushing the ball downfield. In a potentially make-or-break season, the Bucks searched for a head coach to unlock his full potential and develop his game to the next stage. Enter quarterback whisperer Bruce Arians. Arians has coached more star quarterbacks than Jameis has made terrible off-field decisions. Peyton Manning, Ben Roethlisberger, Andrew Luck, and Carson Palmer. Their abilities were all elevated to new heights, with a distinct philosophy that was either going to make Jameis or break him. No risk it, no biscuit. That philosophy is one Arians lives, coaches, and swears by. That phrase is tethered to the roots of his offensive system, which is famous for long developing vertical concepts that are designed to blow the top off defenses and create explosive plays. He wants the quarterback to sit in the pocket and rip the ball downfield, and the numbers bear that out. Average depth of target, or A dot, is a stat that shows how many yards downfield a wide receiver is when he's targeted. For a quarterback, the higher his dot, the more aggressively he's pushing the ball downfield. No matter the down and distance, Arians wants that biscuit, and his quarterbacks are gonna throw deep. In his book, The Quarterback Whisperer, he wrote, I don't care if it's third and three. If our best receiver is in single coverage and he's running a deep post route, throw him the damn ball. Combining this offensive philosophy and system with an already turnover-prone Jameis Winston, with an even more aggressive style, a bottom 10 offensive line, and a league-high 626 pass attempts, is a recipe for utter disaster. Instead of reining Jameis in, Jameis made it rain, throwing interceptions on the first pass of the game on four different occasions. There are several areas where he struggles as a quarterback, and several reasons why installing him in this type of system was predictably problematic. He has difficulty reading coverages during the down, he fails to understand the leverage and positioning of defensive players, and his situational awareness, especially at the end of games, is non-existent. A perfect example of that lack of situational awareness came in Week 4 against the Rams. In the fourth quarter with 8.25 on the clock, the Bucks are winning 45-34. On third and nine, they are backed up on their own 11. With a two-score lead, you don't want to force a throw into a tight window unless you're 100% sure it's there. Check the ball down, punt the ball away, and sit on the lead. But that's not Arians, and that's not Jameis. Pre-snap, the Rams have a safety in the middle of the field and present a three-deep cover-three zone defense. The Bucks have a three-receiver sail concept, which against this coverage is designed for Chris Godwin to come open on the sail route. When the play starts, the Rams shift to a cover-two zone defense, with each safety playing a deep half. Now, the focus is the holes in cover-two zone. With only two defenders deep, there are holes behind the cornerbacks and outside the safeties, as well as one giant hole in the deep middle of the field. Cover two zone is better against the sail concept because the cornerback sits in the very spot it's trying to exploit. However, it's not perfect. The go route outside attacks one of those weaknesses, which is known as the turkey hole. When Jameis sees the safety rotating over the top at the snap, his attention immediately shifts from the sail route to the go. He's good at perceiving these holes in coverage before they develop, but will stubbornly force the throw to that spot whether or not it's actually open. He's keying cornerback Marcus Peters to see if he carries that go route or jumps up to the flat. This throw has to be perfectly timed and absolutely gunned into that small window. In this situation, it's just too risky of a throw. Jameis hitches one too many times, which closes the window. Peters starts to jump the flat route, but due to the hitch in Jameis's footwork, has the time to retreat backwards, intercepting the pass and taking it back to the house. Instead of correctly identifying Peters' leverage on time and checking down to his running back, who maybe could have picked up the first down, Jameis ignored the situation and jammed a throw into a spot that almost cost the Bucks the game. His ability to read coverages is very peculiar. Right at the snap, he can identify and anticipate where the hole in the coverage will be. But he's so overconfident in that read, he'll throw to that hole without actually seeing it come open. He's reading cover three zone pre-snap, which has three deep and four underneath, two playing hook zones in the middle of the field, and two playing curl flat. 
In this coverage, he knows backside, he has Mike Evans on a dig route that will cut in behind the hook zone defenders. So if his pre-snap read is correct, he knows exactly where to throw the ball. On the first step of his drop, he sees the linebacker shift into their hook zones and the will linebacker turn to the three receiver side. This confirms cover three zone. Jameis has the indicators he's looking for and knows exactly where he's throwing the ball. As soon as Mike Evans dig route clears the curl flat linebacker, Evans will cut into the open window. However, the Falcons aren't playing a regular cover three zone. They're playing a cover three match, which is cover three zone mixed with man coverage principles. The difference is cornerback Desmond Trufant, who is playing a read technique. He is still playing his deep third, but when a receiver enters his area, his zone assignment turns into man. Jameis sees that curl flat linebacker move outside of the dig window, so he anticipates Evans fitting into the space, but Jameis fails to read the leverage and eyes of Trufant. Since the read technique starts a zone, Trufant keeps his eyes on Jameis while he's dropping in relation to Evans, whereas in regular zone, he'd drop into his deep third and the dig would cut in front of him. Jameis correctly identifies the weakness of the coverage, but incorrectly identifies the leverage, technique, and positioning of Trufant, who easily undercuts the route and intercepts the pass. Jameis struggles to read coverages after that initial picture changes, but if the defense gives him a look he can easily identify, he can make throws that only a handful of quarterbacks can. He's at his best on one-on-one -on -one isolation routes, or concepts that clearly define his read and don't make him think too much. While he's rightfully the butt of every joke, it takes a hell of a lot of arm talent and ability to throw for 5,000 yards. An example of that ability came later in the same game. The Bucks are running a divide concept where each outside receiver will run go routes up the sidelines, with the slot receiver Chris Godwin splitting the middle of the field. The play is designed to defeat two high defenses like cover two zone, and that's exactly what the Falcons are playing. Like we talked about in the Rams game, cover two zone has weaknesses up the sideline and in the deep middle. The Falcons play Tampa 2 zone, which is still cover 2 but tries to eliminate one of those weaknesses by putting a linebacker in the deep middle hole. Any linebacker on a receiver is a speed mismatch, but if that linebacker starts with enough depth, he can top most vertical routes. The divide concept works so well against this coverage because the go route spread the two deep safeties toward the sidelines, and the divide route matches up the receiver and linebacker. Jameis understands what the divide concept is trying to accomplish and how deadly it is against cover two zone. The moment he sees the strong safety drop to the deep half, he stares down Godwin the entire play. Deion Jones is the linebacker best equipped to cover a receiver in space, but nobody can guard against a perfect throw. Jameis fires a rope 30 yards downfield. When he knows what's coming and can identify his receiver in a one-on-one -on -one matchup, he can make every single throw. Another strength is his comfortability inside the pocket. When he needs to hold the ball to wait for a receiver to come open, he can operate in extremely tight spaces and make deep throws downfield with a constricted pocket. When he knows exactly who he's supposed to target, he is a rock star, rifling balls deep down the field. But when the coverage picture changes mid-play, or he misreads a defender's leverage, that's when his arm leads him straight into trouble. Arian's vertical, pedal-to-the-metal style of offense, paired with Jameis, often got the team into trouble, and the rigidity of that offensive philosophy often limited the team's success. In Week 11, the Saints' defense used a wrinkle to shut down the Bucks' vertical concepts and force them to make adjustments. Arians loves 3x1 formations, putting three receivers to one side of the field, either in trips or bunch alignments, and placing a solo receiver to the backside. Defenses count receivers on each side of the field from the outside in. The outside receiver is 1, then 2, and 3. The wrinkle was to play cover two zone, but bring seven defenders up to the line of scrimmage, then have a linebacker match two and the other linebacker match three. Since they were covering the receivers, the other defensive backs came on blitzes and pressured Jameis 25 times. Instead of shifting their strategy to attack the open space underneath like a quick in-breaking route from number two or a backside slant on the other side, the Bucks continued to run their vertical concepts, which put Jameis under constant duress and left him nowhere to throw. Those concepts and constant pressure forced him to make quick decisions and force tight window throws, which is never a good strategy. The Saints kept running and running this concept, daring the Bucks to stop it. On 3rd and 12, they changed their formation a bit and shifted to a 2x2 look, 
the Saints played the same defense, with each linebacker now matching the number two receivers to each side and blitzing five. The offense has mirrored hook-fly concepts. The ones will run fly routes, and both two receivers will run 12-yard hook routes that will sit down into open space away from the defender. At the snap, Jameis sees the defensive back blitzing, so he knows the linebacker is going to once again match the two. And since that defensive back is coming quick, he needs to throw early and with anticipation. He can't lead the receiver too far outside because of the squatting corner in cover two zone. The linebacker's back is turned to the quarterback, so he's not able to see where the ball is coming from. This calls for a back shoulder ball, and Jameis throws an absolute beauty. With the pressure, the ball comes out before the receiver even started coming out of his break. Jameis has the highest of highs and the lowest of lows. In two plays, he'll flash top five quarterback potential and then make the biggest what the funk brain fart you've ever smelled. Jameis Winston is one of the best 32 quarterbacks in the league, and I believe he deserves a starting spot in 2020. Bruce Arians is an incredible coach, and his resume speaks for itself. But there were many adjustments he failed to make in this past season. There are ways he could have tailored the offense more to Jameis's strengths and removed some of the concepts that he struggles with. For example, when the Bucks ran play action, Jameis's numbers skyrocketed in every category, but Arians called it just 17% of the time, which ranked 34th amongst quarterbacks. Jameis's improvement with play action makes a lot of sense. It cuts the field in half. There's fewer defenders, which creates easier reads, less pressure, and he's able to rely more on his mobility. He is not great at reading coverages dropping back, and he struggles to read the leverage of the defense. It is almost impossible to win with a quarterback who throws that many interceptions. But in many ways, his immense talent was not utilized to its maximum potential. 30 interceptions is an astronomical number, and one that everyone will continue to laugh about. But his other numbers aren't normal either. He's not just another quarterback the NFL can kick to the curb. If he gets a starting shot in 2020, and he should, one thing is for sure. Jameis Winston will put up numbers. Thank you so much for watching this episode. If you haven't already, make sure to hit subscribe so you can catch all future content. I hope everyone is staying safe and taking care of your loved ones. I know it's a crazy time, and hopefully this episode takes your mind off things for just a couple minutes. In regards to my voice, this is week three of Andrew filling in. My voice is still damaged, but I should be on track for the following episode. So thanks, everyone, for sticking with me. If you'd like to support the future growth of this channel, you should check out my Patreon page, where I take plays from real NFL playbooks like Kyle Shanahan's and break down what all the plays and weird coaching terminology really mean. I talk about what Y scissors means, or three jet protection, or what all those little blue numbers are referring to. I post additional content daily on Patreon, including articles and videos, so if you want to check all that out, make sure to click the link below. I'll be coming out with either a Jerry Judy or CD Lamb video next week. We'll see if the 49ers should draft one of them with that newly acquired 13th overall first round pick. Alright, hope you're all staying safe. Until next Saturday, see ya!